you let capitalism work today instead of intervened, um, the prices would fall by 85 to 90 percent. So if I have a house, if I have a house of a hundred thousand dollars, that means it drops to twenty thousand approximately. Yes. Yeah, that could that that could that that could happen. And I know people that will say there's no way that that could happen. Uh, but but if you just realize that how much money is is stimulating the economy and what what the natural course essentially what nature should ha if innovation I'll go back in a different way if if entrepreneurs are racing into solve problems for people right and they win by creating value and they lose spectacularly unless they create a lot of value and those entrepreneurs are using technology to create a, a lot of value and that technology is moving everywhere into every industry the byproduct of that means we should expect prices to be falling along that same exponential path that technology is moving the only reason it isn't is it because we're inflating on the other side through through easing and debt that can never be repaid back so if you remove the debt the unwind feeds back on itself and you have a deflationary depression and so, so, or if you stop adding debt at that rate, you have a deflationary depression and it would be ugly. It'd be ugly for society. Food lines, price collapses, bank collapses. It would look, it would make the 1930s um, look like a walk in the park because the problem is so much bigger today. So one of the reasons you talk about the debt and all this, the reason the Fed and the treasury do not want deflation is because the plan since 1970 has been you borrow money and you pay it back with cheaper dollars. Yeah. So, I, so I, I bought, I borrowed a hundred thousand dollars for a hundred thousand dollar house, but then it goes to 300,000. I feel rich and I can pay off the hundred thousand dollars. And that, you pay off the hundred thousand dollars in dollars that are worth less later right. on. So right. it's actually good for debt. And that's why inflation has worked so well since 1971 when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. Inflation is just a hidden tax. Right. It's a way for now government the, uh, to go bigger. Now the problem is, is that artificial intelligence is going to take away the idea of what, what you were saying on Mark Moss's show was the idea that technology would create more jobs. You're saying it's not going to happen. It's crazy to think so, right? It is crazy. Now, I, so I, I will debate that with anybody that wants to debate it. But if you if you understand if you're at the front edge of this and you understand what's happening, it's it's impossible to think it could create more uh, more more jobs because because that technology is and so even the jobs today people get fooled because they're looking at an independent part of the system, and there wouldn't be as many jobs in the market today if you didn't uh, if you didn't inflate. Uh, prices like you're, you're doing. So it, what the problem is we're all on most wheels, right? Trying to save enough money so we can retire one day before the crushing inflation takes that money away. And we're trading our time for dollars that are worth less over and over and over again. And we think the job is what's important. I would just, it, this is going to sound crazy to your listeners, but it is true. What if you could have the exact same or more and, and didn't have to trade your time for that most wheel of a job, right? So what would happen with deflation is you you would get more for less on an axis that would bring down uh, bring down prices, and you wouldn't need the high paying jobs that are going to be gone anyways, right? Because you would be your your prices would constantly be coming down, and that means you wouldn't need to work as much for those things. 